We're revisiting the Neutrik Dante interfaces today and giving one away. That's all coming up next. Help the channel out by taking a second to like this video and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. It really does help. There are links also down below to have your name added to the credits and access the Discord server too. I really hope to see you all there. We're back with the Neutrik Dante interfaces that I have been really enjoying using. If you missed video 188, definitely go check it out. We take a first look at some of the features and the basics of the D-Line unit, the D-Pro, and the PoE power supply. I wanted to do a follow-up today for a few important reasons. One is that I made a mistake in the last video, and I want to make sure to set that right. Two is there have been some firmware updates and some really exciting changes of what you can do with the D-Pro unit, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And third, Neutrik said it's okay to give the D-Line interface away to somebody, so huge thanks to them for that. We'll talk about those details in just a minute. So for anyone who missed the first episode, quickly we'll recap. These are 2x2 two two PoE Dante interfaces, one being a line level affair and the other offering microphone and AES inputs and outputs. They would both be really ideal for any sort of flown application or anywhere you might need to pick up and drop off audio in a rack or mounted directly to a riser. They sent over some really cool mounts for those. And they're even rugged enough, they come with these nice rubber bumpers that pop off. Rubber baby buggy bumper. Uh, you could throw these out on stage. The line level unit would be great for keyboard players, anybody else submixing on stage. And the microphone unit obviously would be really helpful for any musician that needs a couple of mic inputs or a sending AES if they have that capability, very cool. And then again, you get those two channels back, either analog line level AES, uh, really, really helpful for individual stations on stage and picking up and dropping off audio in unusual situations. So where did I go wrong in the first video? I misspoke in that I was showing the D line unit on screen while talking about a feature that only the D Pro has. Thanks to Neutrik for pointing it out really quickly so I could amend a comment to the original video, but let's talk about the difference here to make sure that everyone is on the same page. So the D-Line level unit uses the Audinate Ultimo chip inside to do all the magic. The D-Pro, on the other hand, uses the more capable and as such more expensive Broadway chip. This allows the D-Pro to be able to patch its own input to one of its outputs, and that's a function that's not possible with the Ultimo chip. I made a pretty big deal out of that feature in the last video because it is really handy and something uh, that comes up, a scenario that, that comes up pretty often, or somewhat regularly at least in the real world and setups that I've worked in. I should have slowed down and I should have got it right, and my apologies to anybody who was confused by that. So to be clear on this, the D Pro with the Broadway chip allows you to do something like what I'm doing now is I'm recording through a microphone uh, into input one, and that's putting this microphone onto the Dante network. You can see I've got controller open here. I've also got uh, their software to control this as well. Both of those running under Big Sur right now, just testing. And as you can see, I'm patched out of the output one, and that comes over here to a little Electrosonics recorder. And basically what I'm doing is I'm splitting the mic channel. It's going to the Dante network. You can definitely see that happening here. And it is actually, I've actually got it double patched right now. So I've got microphone input channel one patched to both of these outputs here. So you could split a microphone at the source and uh, use it for other things, record an ISO, do whatever you need to do with it there and still put it on the network. The Ultimo chip doesn't allow you to do that. And you can see why I made a big deal out of that. The functionality uh, for special use cases is really, really interesting there. It's something that I would probably use quite a bit doing uh, kind of mixed media broadcast, uh, unusual events where you might be dropping a musician into one weird place or setting up a speech in an unusual part of the room. To be able to do all that over PoE and drop something like a portable recorder to catch that ISO locally or whatever the case is, it might not be a recorder, but whatever you need to do with that split locally, it's a heck of a lot of functionality to be able to do that on the end of a PoE uh, cable. So really cool. 
I've had a couple of people ask, and I wanted to point out that the D-Pro does work in standalone mode as long as it's been patched and configured before you set it up. So right now, the only thing going on, the only thing powered up right now is this D-Pro. Uh, you can see here, I am no longer connected to it with this computer. Uh, there's nothing plugged in over here. You can actually see uh, no IP address for the computer. Uh, the D-Line is turned off, but I am still recording a vocal uh, voiceover using this microphone patched through to this output. So that's a really cool feature. And these also work point to point without the computer. I can plug this guy in and obviously that's a Dante network on its own. You don't need the computer to make this happen. It did drop the audio there for a second when this one came online, but that's not something you'd normally do in a show situation anyway. You don't really want to hot patch uh, Dante devices uh, while you're doing mission critical work. So all is well. We've got a really uh, cool little set of tools there, and this one is going to be going to somebody real soon. So let's talk about updates. You may have caught my recent video about updating Dante firmware, but let's be honest, not many folks watched that one so far. So I'm guessing it's just not a hot subject for most people. In that video, I mentioned how the D-Pro comes with its own software and the software it comes with is great, but I suggested that Audinate might consider adding some of this basic functionality for high pass filter, phantom power, mic line switching into controller because for like the Avio adapters, there's a couple of extra things you can adjust like the output level. It's really awesome that QSYS users already have a plugin available to help with this. And now Yamaha users are in luck too. It's really cool that the D Pro is now supported by Yamaha CL and QL consoles in their version 5.6 firmware update released just this week. With the consoles able to identify and control these units right from the surface now, you have a much more elegant way to make quick changes on the fly without additional software. For managing flown microphones, devices needing to send or receive AES up in the air, or an odd splitting need for a mic coming into the network like what I was talking about a moment ago, having control from the console will absolutely be a game changer for these units and something that would be really exciting to use. If you have a CL or QL console currently and would maybe like to help me out, I'd be interested to possibly loan this out to you and have you report back what you think. I know most folks aren't behind their consoles at all right now, but if you're doing something with streaming or something virtual and you think you could give this a try and share your thoughts on video, I'd be interested to see if we could set that up. I do need to get this one back, but I will cover the shipping both ways. So reach out uh, in the comments if you think you could maybe help with that. Loaning this one out will be a bit of a trial for some plans I have coming up. In the new year, I really want to work towards using the channel to get more gear into the hands of specifically students who could benefit from learning with the latest tools. I'll have more details on how we're going to do that as things progress and discussions go a little further. But if you're a manufacturer, especially watching this, and you might want to help out or be a part of something like that, please do reach out info at dcsoundup.com uh, and we'll talk. And that brings me to the most exciting part of the video, and that is the D-Line interface giveaway. The D-Line is, of course, the line level 2x2 two two that simply plugs into your Dante network and you patch like normal. There's no control software, it's just a super rugged 2x2 two two line in and out unit that fits into a, like, a lot of tight spots. Everything's on one side, you could really mount this almost anywhere, and again, PoE, so no power supplies or local powering to fool with. These units go for just under $300 right now at most shops, and I'm super excited to see how you fit it into whatever work you're doing at the moment. I really hope this one goes to someone who can put it to good use, and I'm super thankful to Neutrik for letting me give it away. The link is below for all the details on how to enter. On January 1st, there will be three winners chosen from all the entries. One person will get the D-Line interface along with a copy of John Huntington's new book, Introduction to Show Networking, which I cannot recommend enough right now. Another person will get a copy of John's book and a $50 Visa gift card. And a third person will also get a $50 gift card and some awesome in-ear monitor cleaning tools from soundnerdsunite.org. 
Thank you to everyone who has liked, subscribed, shared, and supported these videos in any way, and especially through Patreon this year. I really appreciate you sticking around and making it possible to keep this channel going. I want to say a sincere thank you, and I'll see you real soon.